So, you know, we just ironed out a few technical things, and I'm <laughs> turning it over to our wonderful presenter, Sandy Rylander. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Sa uh, thank you. My name is Sandy Rylander, and um, today we're going to learn about some word tips. If there's any questions you have, please feel free to ask at any time. Some tips, tips are things that you just uh, think are going to save you time and so some of them you probably already know and some of them you don't. So I encourage you even if the first few you say well those are easy I already knew them, uh, stay on because a tip will help you do things faster, so much faster that it, it really is worth the hour investment or hour and a half investment of time. So I thought I'd start out, hopefully you all have my handout but if not uh, it's going to be somewhere where you can print it out with something that I didn't know for about 20 years of teaching Word, and that is, and you may say, well, that's not that helpful to me, but if you point to any of the tabs up at the top, and now that's interesting because I'm not seeing it happen on the, oh, now it's starting. I guess there's a small delay. But um, if you want to scroll from tab to tab, let's say that you don't know what you're looking for, and this isn't just true in Word, it's true in Excel and everything else. If I just use my scroll on my mouse, do you see how I'm not actually clicking on anything, but simply by scrolling, it is moving from tab to tab. <laughs> and I didn't know, I teach, I've been teaching for 29 years, and for the first about 20, I didn't know. Of course, I will give myself a break. The ribbon wasn't around for 20 years, but, but still, uh, I, think, I think that's a really cool way of quickly, without having to click tab to tab to tab. So a simple thing, but kind of a cool tip. Um, view Zoom, a lot of you probably already know this, that if you hold your control key down and use your scroll that you can zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so that's something that's again across all applications. And if you don't have a mouse like that, you know in the bottom right hand corner there's the zoom slider and you can either click to zoom or you can drag or you can click on the plus and the minus. So that's all available down here in the lower right hand corner. Also, many people know, but some people don't know, that the bottom right-hand corner of each group, like this is the page setup group or the paragraph group, in the bottom corner of each group is called a dialog box launcher, and if you click on that, you get to the area where you can get a lot more options than what you normally see on your ribbon, okay? Another neat thing that Word offers that a lot of people don't realize is changeable is the status bar. <clears throat> if you're looking at my screen, I'm in the lower portion of my screen, and this status bar comes with some things already on it, but there are many more things that are very cool that you can add to it simply by doing what I always tell you to do, which is right-click on whatever you don't know how to do. So if I right-click on the status bar, look at all the different things that I can get. And in the legal profession, some of the ones that don't uh, appear normally that I would highly recommend would be to see what section you're in. Oftentimes when you're in a pleading or a, or a longer document, you have different sections. And it's very helpful to know if you're in section one, two, three, that kind of thing, or even if there are more than one section in a document. Um, page number you see, but vertical page position, if you are, uh, working with pleadings ever, you know that you need to be down at at least three inches. Well, how do you know if you're three inches down on the page? Well, I'll show you in a second with having vertical position on your um, status bar, which normally isn't shown, it will show you down here where it says at three inches. That tells you that right now I'm clicked at three inches. How helpful is that? Another thing that's not no normally there, which a lot of people use track changes. And when they want to use track changes, they go to the review toolbar, click on track changes, blah, blah, blah. A lot of time for something when you could just click on track changes right here on your status bar if you have it there. Not only is that nice for starting and stopping track changes because it's a toggle, but it also is nice because if somebody sends you a document, you can see whether track changes are on or off. It will show you in that bottom if you, if you look at the bottom. So there's lots of others you can look through, but those are the ones that I really highly recommend you putting on there. Now there's another reason that it's nice to have those on there. When they're on there, if I point to a uh, section number, do you see where it says click or tap to open the GoTube dialog box? How many have ever seen that little notification? The fact that I could click on there and it automatically shows you to go to, to find, or to replace. 
Go to is cool because you can click on section and go to the next section. You can go to a comment, so from comment to comment, go from footnote to footnote. How many times have you searched through a document to find the next footnote or whatever? How nice is it to just be able to go to footnote and just click next or previous? Go from table to table if I want to check to make sure all my table formatting is the same. All of these neat things that you can go to right here simply by having clicked on section and seeing go to. Or if you like the old find, I don't know if you've noticed over the last five, six years, the new find uh, shows up in this navigation pane. And some people love it and some people not so much. And then there's people like myself who love it sometimes but not so much other times. And so the ability to quickly go back and forth between the old kind of find and the new is really nice. Again, simply by clicking on section. Okay. Now section is not the only one that you can uh, click on. Notice if I point to the vertical position, which we just added. Well, I didn't just add it because I, I keep it there. But they, hopefully you will have added. It also does the same thing. It will bring you to that go-to dialog box. Now, I was telling you that the way that you see where you are vertically on a page is all you have to do is click at wherever it is that you'd like to see your vertical position. So if I click right in front of Word or anywhere on that line, notice it says I'm at three inches. So if your pleading numbers are slightly off or whatever and you're worried about, hey, am I really at three inches, this is such a nice easy way to check. Or maybe you're printing on a form, a fill-in form that you're going to put into your printer, very important that you're at the right physical location. So this will help you a lot in that respect. Now, if I click on, I'm going to close my navigation pane because it won't show you much otherwise, but my navigation pane, which is something we're going to get to as another thing that I love as far as a tip, um, there's so many cool things about that navigation pane, especially if you're using styles. Um, all you have to do is click on this page number, and notice even before I say anything, if you look at the tip in the bottom, it says if you can click on that to open up the navigation pane. So how, is, how cool is that? You don't have to click on view and then go to and click on navigation pane. All I have to do right here in my status bar is click on the page number, and it opens up the navigation pane. So uh, if you don't know what the navigation pane is or does, we're going to get to that. I kind of want to go in the according to my handout in case any of you are following along in the handout. Okay. Now, uh, just as a to, quick note um, for people, the handout is available in your control panel under the handout section. Um, it's a downloadable PDF there. Uh, it will also be attached to the recording and made available online. Thank you, Brian. Um, so, uh, on page two of the handout, you saw, or excuse me, page three. Page two shows you the go-to and the ability to go to um, uh, tables or graphics or anything like that. I showed you a second ago, right? And go-to allows you to go from them. But you can either access it there, it's called browsing different objects, or Notice right next to, in the navigation pane, right next to the search document, there's a down arrow at the very end. Notice that if I click on that, many of those same options are right here. If I want to go from graphic to graphic, from table to table, from equation to equation, from footnote to footnote, it's right here. Now, should you decide to do that? So I'm going to say to tables. First of all, it takes me straight to my first table. Very cool. But then to go to the next table, that's what these are for. So I click on the down arrow to go to the next table or the up arrow to go to the prior table. So this little down arrow is very cool. Also, remember I was telling you about find, the, the advanced find, the reason it's called advanced find is it brings up that same box that you saw when I went to go to and then clicked on find. It's the old style find um, versus the find using the navigation pane. Right now, if you were to just click on find, if I went to the home tab and I went to just a normal find, you see how it opens up the navigation pane and I could type in something like Word, okay? And it's a very nice find. One of the things I like about this find and one of the things I love about the navigation pane is, first of all, it highlighted every single word, word <laughs> uh, that it found. It shows you that there were 31 results. You could easily now scroll through your document um, 
and find all the words you want that way. Or what I love is, I mean, it used to be that you have to go find next, find next, find next, right? Or here you would use the up or the down arrow. But now, instead of doing that, the neat thing is in the navigation pane, it shows you snippets of every time it found that word. So if you can tell by the snippet which one you actually wanted, which one you were looking for, um, <coughs> sorry, I have this slight delay in my, uh, my poor mouse is trying to move, but it's having a tough time. Here we go. Uh, if I now, um, there we go. If I now click on this snippet, Notice it takes me right to that one. So instead of just having to, you know, search 500 times through my document to find the right one, I can just read over on the left and click on it, which I think is a really helpful thing in the navigation pane. Okay, um, so we've done quickly finding objects, which is on page three. On page four, it talks about, uh, and many of you may already know this, but I'm going to go to open, which a lot of people, I see so many people go to file open, and it makes me sad <laughs> that you're using uh, your menus, though menus are nice, but they take way too long. If you're going to file open or file save or file send as PDF, if you know send as PDF is there or send as email, you're taking valuable time away from your work. Um, so if you're ever going to the file menu, pretty much you oughtn't, unless it's something you do very occasionally. Anything else ought to be put on your quick access toolbar. And down here, this is my quick access toolbar, and I'm going to show you some of the things I love the most. And you don't have to write them down, because in my handout, I, I put all the things I love the most, so that you can copy it uh, yourself. And I'd even be willing to send Brian or Sue um, you can now export your uh, tools and and so somebody else can import them. So in two seconds you can have my tools if, if you want them. But anyway, so moving along, so one of the things that I put on my quick access toolbar right here is open so that I don't have to go to file open. So I'm going to click on open. And notice when I do that, the first thing it wants to show me are recent documents, okay? So here are my recent documents. First it says pinned, then it says this week, then it says last week. And as I scroll down, I can see more and more documents that I've used in the past. Okay? The number of documents that you generally get to see by default are 25. I like to see as many as I can, so I, and I always change it to 50. And we're going to see in a minute how to do that. But Pinned documents is what we're talking about right now on page uh, four in my handout. And what pinned documents are, are shortcuts to the documents that you use all the time. What I see so many people do is they move documents they use all the time to their desktop. And that's a dangerous place to keep them. It's not so bad if you're moving a shortcut to the document, but if you're moving the document itself, the chances that it gets harmed, you accidentally delete it, whatever, is not a good thing. So instead of doing that, and instead of making all that clutter, right here, anytime you see a document, let, let's say for the next week or so, I'm going to work a lot on my 2016 tips training manual. All I have to do is hover over it. And as soon as I do, do you notice how a push pin appears? When a push pin appears, if I click on it, notice it moves it up into this list of pinned items, which means it were, it's going to stay there forever or until I decide I no longer need it, and then I can click on the push pin again, and it joins the recently used list down here again. I don't know if I quite got it. I'm not, oh, it did get it. It's just, this is slow to responding, so now it moved this one down as well. But anyway, um, so you can pin as many items as you like or unpin, and again, this is across all applications, a great way to have at your fingertips those things that you use all the time. Now, should you decide that you'd like to have 50, I mean, why would you not want more? Why would you not want to look at the last things you used for the last month or whatever? So if you want to do that, you just go, and again, it's in the handout, so um, you just go to Options, so File Options, and it's on this, for, excuse me, it's on the uh, Advanced tab, File Options Advanced, 
and you scroll down until you see the number 25 because it says show this number of recent documents. And that's where you can change this to 50. Okay? So you can also, when you go to open a folder, um, there is another list. You didn't see it just then, but there's also pins for folders. So if you have folders out there that you use a lot, um, which I do, then you can say, I'd like to increase the number of folders that I can see to 50, not just documents, but where the documents are stored. Okay? All right. So those are some cool things. Um, and that's on page four. Page five. Help has always been a, a good thing. Now help is a great thing. It's not called help anymore. It's called tell me what you want to do. And this is for people that have 2000, Office 2016, and we are training today in Office 2016. This tell me what you want to do is cool because, again, it spans all applications, Word, Outlook, Excel, everything. And what I love about tell me what you want to do, which notice it's right up here, um, it's right at the end of all your other tabs. When you click in tell me what you want to do, first of all, it shows you the last five things that you looked up. But what I love so much about it is when you start typing, let's say I have no clue how to do a footnote, so I just start typing F-O-O. -O. Notice the very top thing is footnote. It's not telling me where to get footnote. It is going to put my footnote in right here, right now. So you no longer have to find whatever it is. Now, does that have a downside? I believe it does have a little bit of a downside. It means that you still don't know where to find footnote, right? Uh, but if you, you know, maybe it's something that you're only doing once every 10 years and you don't want to have to find it. Now, the neat thing is if I continue to type in footnote, then if I only want to do it this once, I can click on footnote and it'll create a footnote. Now, you would want your cursor to be where you want the footnote reference to be. So if you messed up, like you could say I messed up um, because I didn't click where I wanted it to go, then you would have to get out of it and start again, right? Because you, you don't want the footnote necessarily right here. But if you want to know more about footnote, help is still here. You can click on get help if you want. But it also gives you this great screen tip, and you can learn more right here if you want to, or you can go to the old kind of get help on footnote, or another new feature, which again is across all application, is this smart lookup on footnote. And what smart lookup on footnote does, if you click on it, it opens up another pane over on the right-hand side, and it uses Bing. Of course, it's not going to use Google because this is a Microsoft, but it uses Bing to find on the internet uh, more information about turning on footnotes or, or whatever it is, okay? So that's another cool new tool, but it all is accessed from, well, it doesn't have to all be accessed. I don't know why this is, everything is taking a little time with my mouse. I'm not sure why, but anyway, I'm trying to get rid of this, but I'm having a tough time here. Okay, well, uh, maybe if I click on not now, it'll go away. Oh, there we go. I, I need some room on my screen. So one way of getting smart lookup, as I just showed you, is in the tell me what you want to do, okay? Another way is if you highlight something, like I'll highlight Word, and right click, and smart lookup is an option here which is pretty cool. So if you had something like um, the Declaration of Independence and you wanted to search on it on the internet, instead of going to the internet, typing that term in again, all you'd have to do is highlight it, right click, and do Smart Lookup. And once you have Smart Lookup, you can then, from that pane, you can drag things into your document. So it's really cool if you're doing research to be able to do it that way, okay? Um, <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> All that is from tell me what you want to do, or the tell me box on page five. Anybody who's heard me teach over the last 10 years or ever since there were quick access toolbars know that I'm in love with a quick access toolbar. Why? Well, because unlike the uh, tabs on the ribbon, 
where you have to search every time to find what it is you want, or at least even if you don't have to search, even if you know where it is, it means you have to click to go there. The quick access toolbar is the one bar that you have to put everything that you use most frequently so you don't have to keep flipping between tabs. And that is huge for me. So, and especially, like I said, things on the file tab because, uh-oh. So, that's not, not something I can get to, Brian, so I'm sure you're going to be able to click on that for me. Um, I don't go there. Um, I can't get rid of this desktop authority. Oh, that. That was stupid. I forgot that was there. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so our technical guru just came in and fixed my little issue. Um, okay, so what was I talking? Oh, the quick access toolbar. So everything on the file menu is too difficult to get to, so everything I use on the file menu comes right here at the beginning. So open, new, save, save as, close, um, send as email, send as uh, email PDF. Uh, all of those things are right at the beginning. I never have to go to my file menu unless it's something that I'm doing that's rather unusual. So how do I create a great quick access toolbar? Well, one way of doing it, first of all, uh, the quick access toolbar is generally when you get it is up here at the top and it only has a few tools. So you probably don't even know that you have it. So to move it below, which is where I have it now, below the ribbon, I mean, why wouldn't you want your most used tools to be closer to your documents, right? Uh, not only that, but look what happens if I move it above. So I'm going to right click because, you know, I love right clicking. And I'm going to say show it above the ribbon. Not only, do you see how cramped it is now? How I get to see almost none of them? You lose so much real estate. If you have an older version, you don't lose as much real estate, but instead it actually goes all the way across and you lose your document name. It'll go up to here. So I guess they fixed that in this release if you can call it a fix, but it also means that you get to see almost nothing. So when you have a quick access toolbar, right click and say show custom uh, quick access toolbar below the ribbon and you have so much more that you can deal with. So the first one is just open. Is that not better than file open? Okay, the next one is new, so a new document, spell check, save, which you're all familiar with, save as. Now, why do I want save as here? And what's this little down arrow? Well, save as you know, that's not an issue. But what is this drop down? Well, this drop down is allows me to save as a different format. Okay, so if I want to save it as a template or a PDF, or a document. Well, what does document mean? Document means that this is not, most likely this was not created in 2016, or let me put it this way, if it wasn't created in 2016, if it was created in 2013, saving as document would upgrade it to 2016. Now, why does that make a difference? The only reason it makes a difference is if there's a new function in 2016 that wasn't in 2013, you will not be able to use it until you upgrade that document. There are many things that you won't need this for. But for instance, in 2010, I believe it was, there was no such thing called the snippet function. And snippet is something that we're going to be doing in a minute. So if you were in a 2010 document, and you try to use the snippet function, it would be dull gray. As soon as you see that, you should know you're in an old release. Not only that, but over up here, if this document had, were saved, which this one isn't, it would say it was in compatibility mode. That's another instant clue to you that you have a document that's not in the current version. Okay? So you could save it as document, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay? All right, so that's why I like this one, and I'll show you how to get that one versus save as. It's a save as other format type. Now, you may say, but Sandy, if I just click on save as, not the down arrow, but I click on save as, once I do that, I can change the document type right here. Absolutely, that's true. But why do two clicks instead of one? Why not just have it available right here? It knows exactly what you want, and you're done. So, you know, it's just a matter of what you prefer. Close. Why would I waste 
close on my uh, valuable quick access toolbar? Well, the reason that I put it there is I'm an X clicker. What does that mean? It means that when I want to close a document, or what I used to do is click on the X to close the document. Until somewhere around Word 2010, it was so difficult to tell if it was the last document that was open. And if it is the last document, then it closes Word itself, which isn't a big deal. You can restart Word again, but it's annoying. So instead, if you click on this close, no matter if it's the first, I mean, one of 10 or the last of 10, you will always stay in Word. Your screen may go gray because you don't have a document open, but you're still in Word. So that's why I like that one. Doesn't mean I still don't sometimes click the X and get out of Word because I forget, but anyway. Okay, email. Um, probably most of you know you can do file, send, email, blah, blah, blah. Takes way too long. Why not have it right here? You just click on it. It immediately becomes an email attachment in Outlook, and all you have to do is send it. Okay, so that's really cool. But oftentimes, I don't want you to have the power of changing it. Yes. Who has a question? <laughs> when you do that email, uh -huh. it doesn't put your signature on it. Is there a way that that email would put your signature on it or not? Such a brilliant question. <laughs> and you would think that after all these years, Microsoft would have fixed that. But since they didn't, let's see if we can get this up again. Why is it taking so long? Normally, it does not take this long. There's something. There's some sort of delay here. But uh, come on. Hmm. This doesn't normally happen. I, as you saw the first time it came up, but it's it's still working on it. You can see because it's dull gray, it won't even let me get to it. Let me see if I... Yeah, it's still dull gray. Ah, so annoying when things like that happen. All right, well, let me get out of Word and see what happens here. See, it's still stuck in mail, so something oh. something not fun is happening. That's okay. We'll uh, do our Control-Alt-Delete. Sometimes these things happen. Go to Details, go to Word. Okay, we'll see if we can get back in and make that work. And just so that that little process didn't waste any of your time, I want to show you something else. So I, um, I love to have a document on my screen in order to teach. Like for instance, I'm going to be teaching you that the neat things about the navigation pane, but without having a document with styles up, it, it's very hard for me to teach. So I want to show you my 2016 tips training, which was on there a second ago. But the problem is if I open it and I do all the things I want to do to it, I will have completely destroyed the document because I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff. So if you ever have a document where you'd like it open but you don't want to destroy the original, instead of just clicking to open it up, if you right click on it, do you see where you can say open a copy? Which is why mine didn't have the document name that you saw a minute ago. Remember, oh, look at compatibility mode at the top. Did you see that? Let me just close that for a second. I'm going to go back in open and down here Word 2016 tips, I'm going to right click, I'm going to say actually up here you see compatibility mode right here. Oh, yeah. So that's the compatibility mode I was telling you about earlier that if you're not in the current version that's what's going to happen. Okay. So I'm going to open a copy still. Okay. Now, so I've opened a copy and there was a question, well, I already did email, so just in case this doesn't work, I'm going to do email as PDF. And what it's going to uh, do is it's not only going to set, put this in an email, but before, it's going to convert it to PDF, which is the most amazing feature, because what I used to have to do is save it as a PDF, and then send it as a PDF, and then 
I would have to go and delete it because after I've sent it, I no longer want it because most likely I'm going to keep working on that document and it's old the second I send it. Okay, so notice that fast, it changed it into a PDF. And Sue's question was, couldn't they be smart enough to add my signature block? And the answer is maybe, but they aren't. So that's why, and it's not just here. Any of you who have ever uh, gone to your network or hard drive to right click and send as, right, send mm -hmm. as email, um, you don't get it there either. Mm -hmm. So not only do you not get it there, but when you do it that way, your uh, email message is in, um, what do you call it, not HTML, it's in plain text format. So not only don't you get your signature block, but if you then pop in your signature block and it has any pretty formatting, it all goes away. So that's why, come to the rescue, Quick Access <laughs> Toolbar. That's why on every Quick Access, in my Quick Access Toolbar in Outlook, I make sure I have HTML, so I will click on that first to make sure that and again, that, that's not true here. That's true when you do something off your hard drive or whatever. And then right next to that is my insert signature. So, and I have two signatures. I have one for new emails, one for replies. So I just click on new and there's my oh. signature. So it's not as nice as if it did it itself, but, but it's a whole lot better than yeah. having to do it. Now, one might argue that it does have signature right here, so it's not that necessary. It's just for me, it's always nice to have it in the same place. And there are not that many things in Outlook that I need to have on my quick access toolbar, so I don't really feel like I'm wasting a lot of room. Okay? Um, all right. So, anyway, so now we, we're ready to send that if we want to. Some features I really like. All right. So now we've got uh, undo and redo. Uh, we also have, I, I don't know that you can, uh, in fact, I'm pretty, oh, see, now that's already gone from my screen, so I don't know why it's still up. Okay, there we go. Um, I don't know if you can see on the quick access toolbar, you probably can't on the screen, but there's a li light little line here and a light little line there. That's going to be important in a second. I'm going to teach you, those things are called separators. And the only reason they're important is to to keep similar things. It's a visual cue that, yeah, to keep things together. So right before undo and right after redo, I have little separators, okay? So the next thing is paragraph settings. There are so many times when I need this paragraph dialog box that I like to have that on my quick access toolbar. Now, it's not just for this one, but this one here, where I want to keep lines together or I want to put a page break before. And some of you may say, but Sandy, you should know that there's the dialog box right here. You could just click right above it. And that's true, but that's only true if I'm on the Home tab. The problem is, so much of the time, I might be on a completely different tab. I could be in the Tables tab or whatever. And so I have to click on the Home tab first and then find this where this is just always here. <coughs> so this circle shape is kind of sad that uh, Word has not come up with cute little um, icons for every different possible thing that you can put on your quick access toolbar. Page break before is one of those. Um, and so you don't really know what it is except hopefully in the context of what you have surrounding it. So what page break before does is if I click on a heading, Let's say I want to make sure that this starts on the next page. I'm waiting for my screen to catch up here. Still waiting. Uh, there we go. So I've clicked here because I would like, no matter what happens, I always want this to be at the top of the next page for some reason. Okay? So what I do is I just click at the beginning of that paragraph and click on page break before, or para page break before, click on that, and it'll shove it down, and it will never go up unless I unclick it, so click it again, and then it moves back up. So you can put it on or take it off. And it, it's nice because you, you don't have to put in a control enter, it doesn't put in another uh, line, it's just right on the line you're on, it shoves it down to the next page. 
Parakeet was next. All of these things, if I were to look back at this dialog box, they are these. Keep this paragraph with the next paragraph to make sure the heading doesn't split from the rest of the, the body of the uh, paragraph. Page break before, those are the things that I'm talking about. And if you're writing long documents, you're, you're using these quite a bit. And so, um, and if, if, if anybody doesn't know what those things do, I'm happy to explain that to you because otherwise it probably doesn't make a lot of sense as to why you use them. So please ask and Brian will tell me that you're asking and I will tell you those. But that these are all related in keeping text on the page that you want. Okay. This next one is paragraph ind oh, interesting. Paragraph indents and spacing, no idea why that's on there. Um, probably accidental. So I'm going to right click and remove from the quick access toolbar. Okay. This is to insert page and section breaks if that's something that you do a lot. For page breaks, I just hit control enter, but if you are working with sections a lot, it's kind of nice to be able to get to that quickly. This is just because I do a lot of pointing to things in my books. So all it does is create a, an arrow. Um, again, it's taking a little while for my mouse to catch up with me, it looks like. Oh, here we go. So I click on it. Always start away from what you want to point to with this crosshairs and draw to what you want to point to so that you can point. So this is more for people who might be doing documentation and they want to point something out. Uh, I don't know that all of you will want that at all, but uh, something helpful to me. Insert file name and path. This used to be something that people wanted a lot. And in Word 2003, I think was the last time they actually had that command in Word. And then they took it out. And they made you learn how to create the field code to do it, which was very mean. And I guess enough people complained that it only took them 13 years <laughs> to uh, now, if in the, let's say in the footer of your document, you'd like to have the file name of path of where you saved it, uh, it's now a part of the, um, a part of what they give you. So I click on insert file path, and even though it says file path, it is the name and the path of the document. So if I were to save this document now, let me go ahead and just, that's not saved, that's new. Uh, let me close that. If I were to save this document, um, see where do I want to save it. I'll save it in documents and call it garbage. Don't want to mix it up with, okay. So uh, notice that it still says document uh, whatever three or whatever it was before, but if I if I were to print it, it would, uh, it would update the field code, but I just clicked on it and pressed F9. F9 is to update field codes, and you may not be able to see it, so I'm going to enlarge it here. But you mm -hmm. see it says, see user Sandy documents garbage doc. And the nice thing about that is if you only have a hard copy, you can go find it. And if you save it somewhere else or give it to someone else and they save it somewhere else, this will always update. So it's a really nice feature that they sort of uh, hid. Uh, for 13 years, but now it's back. Now you may say, well, Cindy, I have been using Word for a long time, and I've never seen it in any of the dialog boxes or any of the ribbons. Why is that? Well, it's because it's not there. The interesting thing about the Quick Access Toolbar is there are a bunch of things, and I'll show you in a second how to get there, there are a bunch of things that are accessible only through the Quick Access Toolbar. There's another cool feature called Calculate, that if you have a bunch, a list of numbers, and you just highlight them and click on Calculate, it'll give you the total. Is it anywhere else? Nope. If you don't know to look at the list of quick access tools, uh, you won't know it's there. So there are little gems hidden in the quick access toolbar function that you might never find. Oh. Um, this is show hide field codes because I wanted to look at the field code. You may never use field codes, so if you don't, don't even worry about it. But this is what that actually looks like, the, uh, the file name that you just put in. Um, sometimes it's very helpful, but these days not a lot of people use field codes, but they are pretty, pretty helpful things. Select text with similar formatting. I will be honest with you, I never use that, but 
I just, it's another one of those things that you can only get to through the quick access toolbar. Uh, so I'm going to reduce the zoom on this. So what that means is if I click on this text, which is obviously bold and that sort of thing, and so I want to select all the other text with that same formatting, that's what this does. So I can click on select text with similar formatting and I'll go through and select all the text that has that bolding and similar formatting, like you, it says. So then if you wanted to unbold it, then you could just hit unbold or something and then why would you ever use it? Um, I mostly to find because I yeah, let's let's unbold. It. it looks like it did unbold it. it good, yeah. So you could do that, yeah. uh, or add italics or yeah. whatever it is. Or um, it. Add yeah. some similar formatting. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's sort of a little bit like doing a find and replace a yeah, formatting. That's what I figured. Okay. Um, this next one, if you don't use styles, is going to help you a lot, but it allows you to see the styles pane over here, which if you're using long documents or doing pleadings, you absolutely should be using styles. Mm -hmm. This over here shows you the style that is applied to the text that you're currently clicked on. So when I click on this text, if I don't know this, if there is a style, uh, notice that's the exercise style. If I click on this one, it's the exercise task style. So I love this because it tells you without having to view the styles pane or anything, it tells you what style is currently be applied. And it also allows you to change it. So I can click on this down arrow and uh, change it to a different style. Like the head of board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or just move your curve, yeah, something like that. Okay. So I should look at my book because I think I've, okay. So on page eight, seven and eight, it tells you how to, um, to navigate on the quick access toolbar, but I, I don't believe I showed you, but if I, uh, so I'll show you right now. If you want to add something that you see on your ribbon that you'd like on the quick access toolbar, and you can then just right click on it and say add to quick access toolbar. Oh. If it's dull gray, if you don't see add, most likely it's because it's already on the quick access toolbar. So um, let's see. Um, I believe I have sorting on there. I thought I did. Yeah, sorting it is easy. So if I right click, this mouse delay is driving me a little crazy. But anyway, uh, it's not this sort that I did. It's uh, a sort over here. But anyway, if, if it's dull gray, most likely it's because it's already on. If I want one of these off of the quick access toolbar, then I can just right click as you saw me do a few moments ago, and I can say remove from quick access toolbar. But when you add something to the quick access toolbar, it'll always add to the end. Okay? And if I go to file, I can't add any of these. I can't right click on any of these and add to quick access toolbar. So how do I do things that I want to do to the quick access toolbar when it doesn't appear I can do it with right clicking? Well, a lot of people will say, well, just to move them, just drag them. It's a nice thought, but it doesn't work. So, customize. And there's a couple different ways. One is to go to the very end. There's a drop down arrow at the very end of the quick access toolbar. And one of the, well, this says more commands. More commands and customize are the same. Why they can't call them the same, I don't know, but they are. Um, these are ones that you can add simply by clicking on them. And you can see I've added a lot of them myself. But the way I do it generally is I just right click on the quick access toolbar because I always like to right click and then customize the quick access toolbar, which is the same as the other command. And my mouse is not, <laughs> there we go, all right. So once I've customized, it's on my screen, but it's not appearing yet. Presto changeo. Come on, let's go. Well, as soon as, it, there we go. So on the left, um, are all the commands that you can choose from, and on the right are all the ones that I've chosen. Now, I'm lying a little bit because on the left, really, right now, are a subset of all the commands called popular, okay? I'm not a big fan of popular commands because I don't feel like a lot of them are that great, so I click on the down arrow, and notice there are commands that are not in the ribbon, which I told you about, right? But I love all commands because I always like access to everything, okay? 
So this is absolutely everything. So someday when you've got nothing better to do, scroll through <laughs> these. And if you don't know what one does, just double click, put it over here and try it out. Now, sometimes things look so identical. It's like, well, um, what's the difference? And sometimes they are exactly identical and you have no clue what the difference is. If so, put them all on your quick access toolbar. Try them all out and right click and get rid of the ones you don't want. Now I will tell you the ones that have arrows or drop downs means that like the save function has yeah. that drop down, it means that it has a drop down. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on S just so I don't have to scroll all the way down to the S's. Now from here I need to scroll. You can't start typing SA because it will go to the A's. It will only do one letter. But if I go down, look, there's a save all. If you have 10 documents open and you'd like to save them all, you could add that command. But I, I'm going to keep going. And notice that save as has no arrow. So I know that this could not possibly be the save as that I'm talking about because it wouldn't have that down arrow. So the save as that that one is, is save as other format. And you can tell because it's got this arrow. You can also tell because if you look over here, um, it says save as other format, which is why I printed this out for you. Not just the tool, the quick access toolbar, but I actually printed this so you'd know exactly what they were named and how to get them up here. Okay? Now, one of the things that happens when you add something here to the quick access toolbar, you can do it one of two ways. If I want to add this one, I can either double click on it, but notice it goes to the bottom. If I want this to be up among the other saves, I would have to then click the up arrow about, you know, 20 times to, to make that happen. I'm going to now double click to remove it, okay? If I want it to go underneath a different tool, just click on the tool that you'd like it to go underneath, then come over here and double click, and notice it does it right beneath. So that will save you a lot of time. Um, with hitting up and down arrow. So you click on where you want it to go, it'll go beneath what you clicked on, okay? All right. Um, <coughs> the separators that I told you, you probably had a hard time seeing, they're going to be at the very top of every single menu. So notice, remember, I have a separator just to keep um, certain things together. You don't have to have any if you don't want. It'll waste less space but I kind of like that visual cue that these two go together just to find the stuff a little faster, okay? Will the, excuse me. Yes. Will the separators help you when you're working with styles to keep the styles from, or to keep the styles from running together? Um, the names of the styles? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it just draws this really fine little line. Um, so, that, that's all it does. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, we'll, we'll look at that again in a second, but uh, I did want to show you that notice this import export. If I click import export and say export all customizations, it's actually going to bring me to a screen where I could, if I wanted to, it, it's going to just call it word customizations, but if I wanted to identify it, I could say SR for Sandy Ryland or whatever. And then I could send these to Sue if she wanted, and she could then save it to her hard drive somewhere and then just do an import of that word customization. Mm -hmm. Now, my only caveat and the only reason that you may not want to do it is it will completely replace. It doesn't add. It replaces what you have. So if you have some favorites, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but it means that you should um, see what those favorites are so you can re-add them after you import. Um, or so, uh, Cindy, we've got a quick question here back on the um, uh, word program defaults, um, which is um, our word program defaults to Calibri 11 and often when you change something for a block text spacing, it switches um, it back to the default. Can you change that? Yes. Okay. Is the next question how? <laughs> yes, you can change it. Um, let me get out of this in a second and we will show you how. Okay. Um, so, uh, 
NJP people, you know, you have, we've created a toolbar for you, so you may not want to do this. You may want to keep what you've got, but, but for other people, if they want, this is, this is a cool thing, or add some of these tools to your quick access toolbar, okay? All right, so, yeah, and as I said, like, calculate is another cool command. If I just hit C, this is the one that will automatically, yeah, let me show you how calculate works, because I think it's very cool. Um, Calculate is something that I came across because I saw an attorney hand off, there was a bunch of numbers, I think a probate, a bunch of numbers in an email that he wanted added up. And so um, two assistants, one would read out the numbers to the other, recalculate it. They did it three times because they wanted to make sure they got it right and they didn't at first. That's such a pain. I said, well, weren't those numbers in the document? And of course they were. So if you have numbers, I'm typing a bunch, there we go. Um, all you have to do is select those numbers, and the very last tool on here is my calculate. Oh, for some reason, even though it is the calculate tool, when it gets put on your uh, toolbar, it's called formula, I have no idea why. But anyway, as the second I click on it, if you look in my status bar, do you see it says the result of the calculation is? 59,003. Now you say, well, that's nice, Sandy, but I can barely read that in time, and I really want that number in my document. All you have to do is paste, and that number will be in your document. Because it was automatically copied to the clipboard. So now, will this update if I change the number here? No. This is a quick and dirty, it's not Excel, this is a quick and dirty, hey, I just want to add these numbers, please help me. Now, if so if you, um, so I'm going to delete this, and let's say instead you want to subtract 657, that's fine. Just put a minus in front. If you want to multiply, maybe not by 567, maybe we're just going to multiply by 5, then in front just put an asterisk, okay? So then when you highlight, it'll multiply, it'll subtract all of those fun things. Um, be careful because the whole hierarchy of math comes into play, but calculate is a cool feature. So, and here's the total again in the bottom right, and I just have to hit paste and bring it in. So anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a neat little quick and dirty tool. Make sure though, this was a probate or whatever, if you have something like eight chairs tab equals 456 or whatever, let me put a tab up here. There we go. Uh, and 10 tables, you know, so you've got the item and then you've got the number. Be careful because if I highlight everything going down, guess what? 8 and 10 are going to be added into there as well. So when you have something like that, and I'm just going to get rid of these because they're bothering me. Uh, when you have something like this, if they're tabbed, which would be super cool if they were, then one of the other tips that um, I believe I have, yeah, I have word shortcuts in the back of your handout. Um, if you know if you if you just highlight normally, you're going to get everything right. But instead, if you hold your Alt key down and start in the bottom right and go to the top left, do you see how it'll just highlight your column? Super cool feature, and especially when you add it to don't add it, but <laughs> no pun intended, add it to calculate. Um, so this would allow you to calculate without getting stuff you don't want. Okay, so that's another super cool function is to be able to highlight just a column which is in the back of my handout. Okay, so the question was, Calibri 11 point, though it's beautiful, uh, many law firms really like Times Roman 12 or something like that. Uh, so when you want to do something like that, you could, what I would love for you to do is to come to the dialog box here and, um, let me see, because I want to keep that to being the body. Uh, actually, so this is not in this handout, but it is in the Word handout if you're an NJP person. Um, what I would love for you to do, first go, if you want to change from Calibri, go to Design first. Then go to Fonts, 
And notice that under fonts, you should have, if you scroll down, there should be a Times New Roman. Here we go, Times New Roman. Um, this is called Times New Roman and Arial. And what that means is your, your body text, if you're using styles, the normal body is going to be Times Roman. But if you have a heading, it's going to be Arial, which is a lot of times what you want. Um, so if that is what you want, then click on that. And once you've clicked on that, click on Set as Default. Set as Default is what's going to make the future documents be Times Roman, okay? And this is, should already be set up for you at NJP, but at other locations. Okay, then, so you do that. That only changed, which I haven't done because I like Calibri, so I guess I could do it for your sake. But anyway, uh, then go back to the Home tab, so then you should have the Times Roman and the uh, Arial. Then to change the font size, let's say to 12 point, come to your dialog box, go ahead and click on 12 point. Make sure that nothing else is checked. Make sure it's not bold or anything else. You know that you happen to if you have if you were clicked in a bold heading, it would say bold and all that. Make sure everything is exactly the way you want. And then once again in the bottom left hand corner is set as default. So you may say, well, Sandy, why didn't you make life easy on yourself? Why didn't you just go down to Times Roman here and Times Roman 12 and click on Set as Default? I should probably go to Times Roman or I'll confuse you. Why didn't you just do Times Roman 12 and click on Set as Default? Wouldn't that have worked? Yes, it would have worked that always, always, always your default would be Times Roman. But that ruins the beauty of having that be what's considered the body font and the headings font. And what I mean by that is later you'll learn, uh, or maybe you already know, that there are many different design templates and font combinations. As you saw a second ago, all of these different font combinations. If you have something designed as body and um, what was heading. it? And what? Heading. Heading. Then Later, if you decide, you know what, this is something I'd like to send, uh, maybe I'd like to make it a little booklet. And what I'd like for this booklet is I'd like to have Century Schoolbook or Calibri or whatever. If you had left them, if you had made them body and heading, then all you would have to do is select one of these other ones and boom, your entire document would look different. Where if you select Times Roman, you're going to have to go in and change every single body every single heading. So there's a beauty to styles that you're going to ruin if you say, hey, forever and ever it's going to be Times Roman. So that's why I do it the way I do it. It's a two-step process, which is not that difficult. Any questions on that? How much time do I have? A half hour? No, 15 minutes, because we have to have 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> it's getting less and less. Um, even I will tell you one of so my. So we do have we do have one more quick question here, which yeah. is how much of the customization of ribbons and quick access is available in 2010 and 2013? Uh, 2010. I'm not sure if it has a ribbon. All of them have quick access toolbar, and I will be honest. Even though I do customize the ribbon sometimes, like for NJP to have my programs on it. I'm not a big fan of doing too much ribbon changing because then anybody else who sits at your desk or you sit at anybody else's and they don't know where things are. So I really encourage you to primarily change the quick access toolbar versus the ribbon. And that's customizable all the way across. Wait, did I say 2003? 2000, 2003 was the old. Okay, good. Yeah, because 2003 was the old style toolbars. So yes, anything that, yeah. So you should be good to go on that. That's why the Quick Access Toolbar was made originally was for you to have a place to put all your favorites because otherwise you'd have to always use the ribbon. Um, but at first they didn't want you touching the ribbon, so they didn't give that to you in 2007 or 2010. And then after that they, they let you mess that up as well. Um, so, okay. Uh, paste preview. Um, so if I take something like this and I do a copy and I go to a new document and I go to paste, lots of different ways of pasting, one of them is to click on this drop down 
And perhaps you have no clue what each of these mean. And to be honest, it takes a while for me to know without pointing to it. And it tells you, use destination theme. Then it says, keep source formatting. Then it says, merge the formatting. Then it says, text only, no formatting. What I love is the fact that all you have to do is point to it until you see the look you like, and then you can click on it. So I've never pasted. I am getting to see exactly what it's going to look like prior to pasting, which I think is an amazing feature. But even if you do, just, let's say you just paste, you do Control V or however it is that you, however it is that you like to paste, that same option is down here. Whenever you paste, you always get this little um, clipboard that again lets you point, and it will just change it, and you decide which one you like. So even after you paste, you still have that choice. And again, this is across all applications, not just Word. Paste preview, great new thing. Editing a document on page 11. It talks about navigating in a document, and people think, oh, Sandy, that's so easy. Why do I care? Well, yeah, it is easy, but so many people do things the slow way. For instance, if I liked everything up to this point in my document and I wanted to delete everything from here on, what most people would do is they click here and scroll down for the next 20 pages to delete, and that's sad. Um, when all you have to do is click where you'd like to start, and you know that control end goes to the end of the document, control home goes to the beginning of the document. But if you add a shift to any cursor movement keys, it will select as you go. So instead of just pressing control end, if I hold my shift key down, then I press control end, now it is just highlighted from that point in my document to the end. And now I can press delete, or I can press bold, or I can uh, do a move, or a copy, or whatever I want. So understanding these little bitsy navigation and selection tools is an amazing thing. Same in Excel, right? Yeah. Uh, not quite the same in Excel. No. Excel will do it for the portion of the doc of the spreadsheet you have used, because it assumes mm -hmm. that you don't want to go to um, yeah, yeah, row yeah, 1 million. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it'll go to the portion. Come to the end of wherever you Yes, go. it will do that. Uh-huh. Um, so also, uh, you know, if you want to select from here to the end of the line, not the end of the, you can just click here and do shift and end will go to the end. Shift home will go to the beginning. Um, if I'm at the beginning, if I hold my shift key down, I can use my arrow key or I can do control right arrow. All of these things are on page 11, okay? Uh, you can also do some cool things with your mouse. A lot of people, if they wanted to select this uh, line, instead of, instead of doing this, with a, which I see so many people doing, instead, if you just come over here to the left, notice my mouse pointer changes to a pointer instead of an eye beam. That means you're in the selection bar. It means if I click, it's going to select a line at a time. If I'm in the selection bar and I double click, it's going to select a paragraph. If I triple click, it's going to select my entire document. How did you get to that selection bar again? Moving to the left. So oh. as long as, see, if this is an I-beam, my mouse pointer is mm -hmm. an I-beam, I just keep moving, 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 moving until, boom. Okay. As soon as it's a right pointing arrow, you're in the selection bar. That's an, also important to know, because I can't tell you how many people want to, let's say, just they want to select the word create which is a very easy thing to do, unless you don't know that when you're here, you can't start because every time it's like, why is it doing that? Mm -hmm. It's doing that because you're too far to the left. You just have to make sure you see an I-beam before you go across. Another neat thing, talking about selection, a lot of people don't know, is if you want to select multiple different areas, all you have to do is hold your control key down. People know that in Excel, but a lot of people don't know that in Word, you can do the same thing. I can hold my control key down and highlight as many different things as I want. And I can bold them. I can make them red. I can do whatever I want. Delete them. You can delete them. You can copy them. Um, you know, so if you have 10 paragraphs that aren't next to each other, you can control uh, and hit as many as you want and do it to as many as you'd like. So. That's all on page 11. It talks about selecting non-contiguous blocks of text, which is what I just did, just holding your control key down and moving. Alt-drag to select a rectangle is also there. So um, 
Another thing I see a lot of people do, which is really sad in all programs, is drag to select. And they drag and it scrolls too fast that way and then that way. And then they just get whiplash from dragging because they, they're always going too fast. When instead, all you have to do is click where you'd like to start and then scroll using your scroll bars down to wherever it is that you'd like to end, hold your shift key down, and click. How much more peaceful is that? And if you screw it up, no biggie, because if you really meant to stop here, again, just hold your shift key down and click. So you can keep changing your mind as much as you want till you get it right and then you can let go of your shift key. The key is you cannot let go of your shift key and click because then you've lost it. Okay? All right, so all of that is on page 11. The navigation pane. Why was I so excited about it? Well, there's three parts to the navigation pane. One is the headings, and these headings will show you anything, any heading that has a style attached. Um, now, all of these are styles, so really easy to add a style. A style is just a group of char uh, formatting characteristics that they've given a name, like heading one, heading two, heading three. And so um, the neat thing about style, so if I go to the top of my document, anything I put a style on will automatically get marked to a table of contents. So for me, it took me exactly about three seconds to create this table of contents because all of my headings had styles attached. Okay. So if I go to screen display, if I click on it, notice that's a heading one. <coughs> the heading two would be the next indent to in. This one also is a heading one because it's still at that first indent level. You see that? But this push pins is one indent in. So if I click on that, I will expect to see that that's a heading two. And, oh, miracle, it is. If I click on this, it should be a heading three because it's another indent in. Oh, it is. The amazingly cool thing about using headings, in addition to the fact that it will automatically create a table of contents is, did you just see that I have like this automatic table of contents over here that hyperlinks to wherever I want? Can you imagine a 100-page pleading and being able to go to Article 6 or whatever just by clicking over in the left? But that's not all. <laughs> I feel like a Ronco advertiser here. but. That's not all. You can, let's say, I want to move this ahead of this one. All I have to do is drag this heading above that heading, and boom, it just got moved in my document. Now, let's say I don't want just this one. Let's say I want this whole topic here. I'm going to collapse this topic for a second. So notice it's collapsed, which is another cool thing, right? If you just want to see your major level headings to see if hey, do I have this in the right order? Now I can take this and drag it, let's say, below or right above move and copy, let go, and I just moved that whole group. It is such a great feature. I love the navigation for moving, for copying, for deleting, for looking at. I can right click on any of these and I can Promote, which means it'll go from a heading two to a heading three or whatever, or demote, which means it'll go from a heading two to a heading one. Um, all these different things I can do, including collapsing all. Collapse all says only show me first level headings. So now I can see, hey, does this order make sense? That kind of thing. Love, love, love this uh, navigation pane. Okay? All right. Any questions on that? All right, um, there's so many things in here. I put in more things than I could possibly do in this amount of time, but you know they're tips. And so it really, none of the concepts are that difficult. I highly encourage you to read and uh, go over these, or maybe we'll have another tip se uh, session um, with Wednesday Wisdom or something like that. But, <clears throat> but let's go over some of the things that um, a couple other things that we have. One is the screen capture tool, which I absolutely adore. Um, so one, one quick thing. Um, I've had a few people ask on the handout. The handout is available in your control panel here on the right-hand side. Um, it is downloadable through the control panel under handouts. Um, we will also post it online with the video um, and the 
uh, blog post related to this. On LSNTAP. Yep, on lsntap.org. So the screen capture tool, if you haven't seen it, is under insert, and there's two different things. That, there's a screenshot uh, and a, sc and a uh, screen clip. A screen clip, well, first of all, you're going to want to move to wherever you are, wherever you want in your document, and click on screenshot. It'll show you every single um, screen that's currently open. And to insert it, all you have to do is click, and boom, it's right there in your document. Really cool. The only problem is, often I don't want this whole thing. Now, there's two ways of solving that. One is I can click on it, I can come up here, click on crop, and I can make it smaller if I want to, just by going, making sure that I'm on one of these uh, corners or on one of these lines, and I can shrink it to whatever I want. The good news to that is if I want to unshrink it, it's all there. The bad news is, that's all taking up a lot of space on my hard drive, network, whatever, because it's saving all of that in case you ever want to bring it back, right? Cropped stuff can be uncropped if you want, if, so to speak. Okay? Not to mention, it takes a little time to crop, right? So the other thing you can do is do a screen clip. Now, to do a screen clip, you do want to have whatever it is you want to clip uh, be the last thing you saw. So, for instance, I'm going to bring up um, my internet if I, there we go. And let's say this is what, let's say I want to clip a part of this. So now I want to go straight from here back to my Word document. I'm going to go to a blank Word document. Because what happens when I click on screen clip, and by the way, um, this screen clipping is absolutely always on my quick access toolbar. Not just here, but also in Outlook, because how many times are you in Outlook that in the body of your message you'd like to take a picture of your Excel spreadsheet or a paragraph in Word? It's a great place to have it, okay? But anyway, so I'm going to click on screen clip. Notice it came immediately back to the screen that I last saw, which is why you have to make sure. Oh, then it goes through this message. Then it goes into snippet, and then all you have to do, you have crosshairs. Make sure before you press down on your mouse that, that you're including everything you want, and then drag across however much you'd like in your document and let go. Boom. How cool is that? Yeah. I also love it for OneNote. Where's clip under, where is it in the menu? In the menu, it's under insert, insert. and okay. then under insert, there's yeah. screenshot, and at right. the very bottom of screenshot is screen clipping. So, but it's right here on my quick access toolbar. So, I think we've run out of time. We've gotten at least halfway through. Um, please take the time to look at the rest, or maybe we'll have um, the rest of it next year in another word tips and techniques. But uh, it was really fun having you. I know we do have time right now for questions and answers, or at least that's what I was told. So does anybody have any other questions? Yeah, can please feel free to. to I'm sorry, can you do what? Put snippet itself on the custom toolbar. Absolutely. Yes, so that's what I have here. So two ways. So the question was, can we put snippet on the custom, quick access toolbar? So when you go to insert screenshot, if I right click on screenshot, then I'm actually going to get the, the screenshot and all the menus with it, which I didn't want. But if you click on the down arrow next to screenshot and go straight to screen clipping, woo, woo, oh, I see. and right click on screen clipping, notice it's still gray because it's already on my quick access okay. toolbar. So but it would allow you to do it. Okay. Yes, and then of course there's always right click on the thing, go to yeah. customize, and you can add it that way as well. Yeah, was there another question, Brian? There was a question over sharing the handouts, um, and those are made available under an open license. They can be shared for free as long as uh, Sandy is giving credit uh, for them, so just leave that attribution uh, on there. Shared within the people that, yeah. well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, legal services are great. Any other questions? Yeah, please feel free to type in any questions, or there's also a raise your hand function in um, GoToWebinar that would allow me to unmute people.
or if anybody just has something they do that they find really cumbersome that they'd like to know if there's a better way, because almost always there's a better way if you think it's cumbersome. So for your toolbar, you have to put a different one in. This is your Word custom toolbar, but Correct. when you're in Excel, you make your own in Excel. Yep. It doesn't switch. It doesn't continue on. It the, doesn't because you don't want it to. Because no, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, um, however, I do try to keep these um, first ones pretty uh -huh. consistent throughout just because you yeah. get used to going to a certain place. Um, Outlook is one of the few places that actually has like three different custom toolbars because you have a different one that you'd use for um, creating an email versus, and you, so when you're in an email versus that sort of thing, but all the rest only have one. Any other questions? Um, can, uh, can Sandy make her uh, toolbar available for importing? Um, yeah. So I'm going to go to Customize. And I'll go to export. And you guys can do it too. Uh, if you get one that you really like, um, you can share with your friends. Um, let me go to documents and save. So this is how you can do it if you want to help somebody out especially somebody who hasn't uh, come to class. And SR, word customization. Faster than a speeding bullet. OK, so, oh, here it is. It was faster than a speeding bullet, it just didn't show up. Okay, so Sue and Brian. Okay, so just remember you're going to want to put it somewhere on your network drive hardware um, or hard drive or whatever, and then do an import, point to it, and bring it in. That's, and remember, it's going to wipe out what you currently have. So um, if you have something you really treasure, find out what it's named before you import. Okay. Um, we will we will take that and we will post it with the blog post. Uh, if it comes through here in a second, I will try to upload it as a handout, but I, I don't know if GoToWebinar uh, supports all document formats or all formats, but I'll give it a try here. Um, another, next question that we have here is how can I add page X of Y pages numbering uh, to the quick access toolbar so I can click and insert it into a footer? That's a good question. Um, not sure that you could without a program, but if you go to insert and you go to the down arrow next footer, one of the things that unfortunately we didn't get to, well, or I should say insert page number, even though it's usually in a footer, um, so if we go to insert, where's page number, page number, right here. Um, so choose where you wanted to. And notice that page X is a page. I thought there's a page X of Y in here. Let's see if it is. Um, there's no page X of Y. Okay, well that's a bummer. It used to be there. Um, all right, so what you want to do then is, I don't know if you want it to be in a footer or what you want, um, but if you just want to type in page X of Y, you can type in page and space and then insert page number, which I was just at a second ago, uh, right? Thank you. <laughs> um, so I like I'm just going to do current position and do a plain number. Uh, or I could have done page X. Oh, here's X of Y. Now, why am I seeing it now? It's on the format page number. One down from where you are. But what I'm saying is page X of Y is right here. 
All right, so I guess there was a page X of Y. I don't know why I didn't see that earlier. That's kind of strange. Um, but so so it's already it's already done for you if you just go to that the insert page number. Um, and then let's see how we can make it more automatic for you. What I would do, one of the things that I've done on my quick access toolbar that um, is saving a selection to the auto text gallery. And so if you want to save this, if you don't want to find it under the insert page number for some reason, if you'd rather save it to the auto text gallery, you could then highlight it. You could then if you don't have this on your toolbar, which you should, um, if you click on that, and then you can call it page X of Y, or you can whatever you want to call it that makes sense to you. Um, keep it in auto text. You can give it a category, like um, page numbers or something like that, so it stays together, or just leave it in the general category. I like giving it a category. Um, <laughs> You can also, if you want to make sure that it's at the very top, um, you can call it, you can do an underscore because it'll always do it in alphabetical order. Um, I would also probably create a category with the same thing. I'd call it underscore page number or underscore my um, whatever. Uh, but anyway, just call it and then click on OK. And so now, so here I have the save, and to the right of that, I have a drop down that shows me on my quick access tools. So notice I have underscore arrows, so that came first. But here's my underscore my and x of y, and boom, it'll just pop it right in there. If you if someone imports your quick access toolbar and they have auto text, it's going to wipe theirs out, right? No, no, no. Okay. It'll show theirs. No, because this isn't the actual auto text. This is only displaying the auto text. It's the same oh. as if you went to insert, oh. quick parts, auto text. Oh, right, right. So, so they, they won't lose them. They won't, no. Okay. Not, no, I would never give you something like that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so you, if you don't have my tools, the way to save a auto text is to go to insert, quick part, auto text, save selection to auto text mm -hmm. gallery. Then if you want to put it in, you can go to quick parts, auto text, and click on whatever you want. But isn't it nicer to have it right here? Quick parts, if you don't know quick parts or auto text, oh my gosh, they are amazing. Maybe we'll do a session just on quick yeah. parts and auto text because that I does take a little, yeah. little while. But it is so worth it because it puts at your fingertips. And there's not just um, text quick parts. There's um, The other one I like on there is the table quick parts. So it, if you have tables that you've created, there's Obviously, we saw there's page number quick parts, header quick parts, footer quick parts. It's just, it's amazing. So, so we've got We're one more one more question here, and I did also okay. want to let people know that in the chat, there's a list of all up, or a link to the list of all the upcoming webinars. We have over 22 more webinars coming up this year. Um, and we're actually going to be adding a few later. Um, there's also a link there to our YouTube channel um, with the particular query of all of the um, past webinars that Sandy has done for us. I definitely recommend checking those out. The next question is, um, can you show how to password protect the document? And is that uh, something you can put on a toolbar? It is. I forget. I'm uh, so under review. There's a restrict editing, and this is where you can uh, password protect if you want to. So you can li limit. There's a lot of different ways you can restrict editing depending on what you want to do, um, and then. You can say which things you want, and then if you say yes to start enforcing, then it's going to ask you for a password and ask you to re-enter the password and don't forget the password because there's no way to. Uh, so I would write it down somewhere, maybe even share it with somebody else in case you're out sick for the day or whatever. But that would be how you can do it is just restrict editing. And yes, you can right click and you can add it to the quick access toolbar. Now, does when you say restrict editing, that just allows somebody not to change it or does it not allow someone to even view the document? doesn't allow them to view it. Well, it depends on what kind of restriction you allow. If you, so you can do either? 
you can do either. Okay. Um, could you show, uh, could you quickly show us how to edit the autocorrect? And this is probably going to be our last question here. Yeah. Um, so autocorrect is in, good question. Um, is it, uh, yeah, but is it under proofing? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, so it's under file options, proofing, and then you see change how autocorrect corrects and formats, you click on autocorrect options. So down here, like one of the things that I okay. do for all my law firms is I take the C with the, the prints out yeah. because they hate that. They, they want it to be a C with prints, not the copyright symbol. Right. So you just click on it and press delete. If it's further down and you know what it's called, you can type a letter so that it scrolls down, click on it, press delete. Um, the neat thing is when you do press delete, it does move it up here into this area. So if you just want to give it a different name or whatever, you can do that. You should also look at these autocorrect options because some people don't like that. They don't like Word to automatically capitalize things or whatever. Um, there's also an auto format as you type. So all of these things have to do with autocorrect and auto formatting right in there. Cool. So I want to thank you all for coming. and. Um, even though Brian did mention all the wonderful new seminars, I just want to mention I'm doing one for you guys next month. If you'd like to come, there's an Excel uh, both next month and the month after that. So for the next two months, we're going to be doing a couple more tech seminars, and I'd love for all of you to come. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sandy. We greatly appreciate it. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free uh, to email me, and uh, we will be sending out a survey after this. Any feedback on this session is greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much.